<laughs> we hope. All right, so try it one more time here. Yes, we have our jar with money in it. 200, 450, 20. You want to get the maximum amount, so we don't want the probability that we're going to reach in there, draw out the 200 and the $150 bill. Okay. My question to you is, can you do this with combinations like you just did on your assignment? Yeah. Are you cho choosing groups of objects? Yeah. 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 We're choosing groups. So yes, this one works with combinations. Okay. Whoops, that doesn't work like the biggest color. So if I'm doing combinations and I want to pick $200 bills, how many hundreds are there to pick from? Two, and I want two of them. Okay. Then I need to pick the 150. How many 50s are there? Four, and I'm going to pick one of them. And then total, how many total bills are in the jar? Fourteen. And how many total bills are you picking out? Three. Three. So when you calculate that, you'll find out, by the way, uh, shortcut for you so you don't have to type it in quite so much, 2C2, anytime it's the same two numbers, it's 1. You can just put 1, so actually this would be, anytime there's a 1 in the back, it's just 4. So this is a 1, okay, you can't, the most, you, if you have a 1 in the front, you can have a 1 in the back. The number in back can never be smaller, excuse me, can never be bigger than the one up front. The front number's got to be the bigger number. If you have a bigger number in back, something's wrong. Yeah. So that actually comes out to be 4 then, 1 times 4 over 14C3, which that one's one I'm not going to do in my head. That's going to come out to be, ah, okay, we just went white. We'll try again. 4 over 364. So if I go with that, that reduces down to a 1 out of 91 chance that you are going to get oh, yeah. the biggest amount of money. <laughs> that's not an opinion. That's that's mathematical fact. Now, maybe you get lucky and you are that 1 in 91 that does manage to draw it. I said, I said to start, you can't see in the jar. I already said that. That's a combination. Now, what I want you to notice, though, is some things that we just sort of accepted as automatic and didn't think about. I was picking groups. I'm picking more than one. There's no reason to do combinations if you only pick one. But did I say you had to pick them in any certain order? No. No. Combinations assume that you are you can grab them in any order. If we were picking them in different orders or patterns, we would be worried about permutations. So combinations are when there's no order involved. The other thing we're assuming, are you once you pick it, are you putting it back in? You're keeping it out. Instead of keeping it. Combinations assume that you're not going to replace it. Once you take it out, it's out. So if you have a problem where they tell you you take it out and then you put it back before you draw the next one, you can't do combinations anymore. So that's what I was talking about with this list of stuff you started copying back here. Combinations assume there's no replacement. You're not going to put it back after you draw it. There's no order. And the third thing, which we're going to talk about, it assumes it's what we call a dependent event. Okay. Right now, you guys are technically considered dependent of your parents. What does that mean? You can depend on them for things. In this case, depend events in the world of probability means what happens on the second draw is affected by what I took out on the first draw. If you got a hundred dollar bill on the first draw, doesn't that change your chances of what you'll get when you draw the second time? So it's dependent. What happens on the first influences the second. On the other hand, over here on the other side, I have independent events. Okay, if they're independent events, what happens on the first one has no impact on the second one. And my best example of that is when you roll a die. If I roll a die and get five on my first roll, does that have any effect on what I get when I roll it the next time? No. That's an independent event. So, rolling a die is an example of independence. Same chances every single time. Okay. So, consequently, you can do combinations and notice 
important key word here. If all of these are true, for you to be able to use a combination that you have to have no replacement, you're not putting it back, no order, and it has to be dependent. All three of those have to be true before you can do a combination. When we don't do combinations, our other option is to do, I call it individual probabilities, or another name for it would be separate fractions. And we're going to do one here in a second. And it would be if any one of the following is true. So if you're replacing it, if you're putting it back in if you draw one, you'll have to do individual probability. If it has an order, if they say you have to draw it in this certain order, or if it's independent, if you have the same chance every time you draw, you're going to do them as separate probabilities. So now your trick is to decide which method am I doing. Oh, can I switch? Are we yeah. good yet? Alrighty. So, same jar of money. But this time, the second one, I want to pick a $20 bill, then a 100 then another 20. What does that imply? There's order. I'm saying you have to pick them in that order. So therefore, can I do combinations? No. I have to do them. Basically, you do the probability of each one separately. So you go, okay, what's my chances of just getting a 20 out of that jar? If I just drew 120, what are my chances of getting the 120? There are eight 20s out of 14. Okay. Then I need a hundred dollar bill. Two out of fourteen? Why thirteen? Yeah, you took out the twenty, so now there's only thirteen left in the jar. So then you went another twenty. Yes, because there's still there's seven of those left and there'd be only be twelve. Then you multiply your fractions together separately. And this is up to you. You can type it in your calculator just like that, or you can. a lot of times you can cross-cancel these down and get them down pretty low before you multiply. Up to you. Like I would notice on this one, oh, look, 2 and 7 cancel and make 14. And you can reduce 8 and 12. So you can reduce them down, or you can just type it all in straight, because your calculator will reduce it too. I don't care which way you do it. If you do that, you will get 2 out of 39 chance that you're going to get a 20 followed by 100 and then a 20. So putting them in order, anytime you make, make things more specific, it's going to reduce your probability. It makes the chances harder to get it in that specific order. Okay. This is, however, is a problem I frequently see done wrong. And this is what happens. I see people go, I need another color. Give me another color. See, people go, oh, I need a 20. So they look up there and go, oh, there's eight 20s, and they do this. My chances would be one out of eight. Oh, yeah. Because I want one of the eight 20s. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, I want one of the hundreds, so it's one out of two. And then I want another 20, so they do one out of seven. That does not work. If you have one running with ones across it the whole way across the top, you should be going, whoops, I'm doing it wrong. That should not happen. That is a major no-no. So we are going to mark that with a stop. Don't do that. <laughs> you see that? Do not go. Oh, I can do it with one out of eight. That is not correct. So that's a bad thing. You start doing ones across the top all the way. You should stop and question yourself. Is that you want eight out of the total in the jar, not one of the eight twenties. So beware of that. Okay, third problem. You're only gonna pick one bill. But it's one of those deals that you get to pick something and then decide do I want to keep it or do I want to try again? So in this case, you pick the twenty, you go, ah, I'll put it back and try again because might you get something better? You really can't do worse. So I'm going to pick the 20, put it back, and then I get a 50. I want the probability that that happens. Can I do combinations or not? Why? Uh, 
replacement, I put it back. And if I put it back in there, I replace it. So combination throughout, you're just doing separate fractions again. Okay, so chances of getting a 20 on the first draw. How many successful are in there? There are eight successful out of 14. You put it back in. Now you want a 50. 14 or 13? Which one? 14. Yeah, put it back so there's the same number in there every time if you put it back. So it's 4 out of 14. Um, you would multiply those together and reduce it, and your calculator will tell you it's 8 out of 49. Or I'm actually okay. You can do uh, Yeah, you can do them as fractions. I'm okay if you do decimals. If you prefer to look at the decimals, because you can look at it as a percentage. If you do decimals, there's significant digits in your answer. So if that's like point zero something or other, other that first zero doesn't count. That's just a placeholder. So there's significant digits if you want to go double. I don't care how many. They're both helpful. Okay. Y'all seem like you get that just fine. Yeah. Okay. Hot dog. Yeah. Let's go play cards. Yeah. Oops, that's not the same pink. Yeah. It's that pink. Yeah. I erased part of the letters as I was erasing this. So, okay. I have to prove a point to you. I've actually, I better, I need to, sometimes need to do this. You guys know your basic card back? Yeah. Yeah. Well, some people are card players and some people aren't. So we kind of maybe need to... How many of each card are in a deck? Four. 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 Yeah. So there's four of each card. Um, oh, by the way, in the little land of mathematics, when they say you have a deck of cards, you don't have jokers unless they specifically say the jokers are in there. Otherwise, you assume there are no jokers. How many cards are in a deck? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Okay. All right. How many of them were red? How many of them were black? Half, which would be 26. So there's 26 red and 26 black in there. Um, oh, face cards. That's one that gets people. How many face cards are in a deck? And what do I mean by face cards? Jack queen king times four suits. So there are 12 face cards in a deck. Oh, how many suits are there? Four. Hard diamond face gloves. Okay. So there's four suits. How many cards in a suit? Are we going to change our 15 to make 15. So thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm about out to run out of room here. How many cards are in a suit then? How many hearts are there? How many? 13, yes. 13 cards in a suit. Should I decide to put a, a question on there about cards on your test and you don't know how many something's in your deck, I'll tell you. I don't expect to be a card expert of yours. You know. Some families are card players and some aren't. Yeah, back in the day. Okay, so now, I want you all to, for, to come and sense this first one. I'm only picking one card, so this is just normal, basic, simple probability like you learned back in junior high. I want the probability that I will get an ace or a black card. I'm entertaining. I got a 29 out of 52. Anybody else? 30, 30 out of 52. I got a 30 out of 52. Was that a 28? Yeah, 28. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. So you're saying that, yes, there's four aces. So technically my probability of an ace is four out of 52, isn't it? Yeah. What's my probability of a black card? 26 out of 52. But some of you are going, well, whoa, some of my aces are black as well. So wouldn't they have been counted twice? No. There were two black aces. So they got counted twice. So then you have to take out the duplicates, the overlap. 
And now, were you adding or multiplying these? You guys are adding. Because when you see the word or, the word or is going to tell you to add. What word has been between all the ones we've done so far on the others? Something and 50. Two hundreds and a 50. A 20, this would be and then a 100 and then a 20. So we've done everything you've done so far, far has been take this and that. So there's a difference. If you see and, you multiply. If you see or, you add them. Yeah. Okay, we're over 50. Thank you. Ooh.